one question that came up was kind of from the transitional justice, from what to what? The mm. scope of the transitional justice. Mm. Uh, what is your mm. response to that? Well, my response would be that, first of all, of, of course, traditionally, you, you simply reduce it to either transitioning from repression to democracy or from conflict to peace, which is quite an achievement in and of itself. But then within that, the question, of course, is what does that include? When you, when you then think about that in terms of the scope of transitional justice, the question is what do you really need to include in transitional justice in order to achieve this transition? And there, traditionally, uh, the, or my problem with transitional justice is in that sense that traditionally it has always been reduced to looking at uh, blood crimes, at uh, civil and political rights violations like torture, etc., which are very important and in many contexts maybe the most important factor, but very often it doesn't really allow us to look at the root causes of the repression or the, context, uh, the, the conflict and also really the economic uh, interest behind it. And so therefore very often it might give us a reduced narrative of what actually happened and then by doing that also reduce the possibilities of then addressing uh, what happened. Mm. And in, in you know, quite a few of the comments or questions you got from the audience here today was also uh, targeting other things than what happened during conflict. So that, that must be in a quite mm. normal case uh, when, when looking at uh, transitional justice or transition period. Ta so t targeting what uh, precisely? The, uh, other, mm. other aspects mm. outside, mm. Of outside of blood crimes. Yeah. Yes, I mean, cert I mean, certainly they occur a lot, and there are some instances of transitional justice um, where, where, um, for example, truth commissions have really looked at um, other issues, like, for example, um, economic crimes in Liberia, um, things like that, or economic and social and cultural rights violations in Timor Leste. So it has to some extent happened, but the problem is that transitional it, it always happens at a very um, ad hoc basis almost. So it, it happens in particular contexts, but because transitional justice doesn't really, and it's very important in many contexts, uh, particularly in the conflict setting. But the problem is that transitional justice, by not dealing, looking at it as part of its mandate, uh, transitional justice doesn't really develop the, the tools or its tools sufficiently to then include uh, these uh, particular violations. And so it's very difficult, for example, for truth commissions to know how to address these and then for states how to, what to do with recommendations in these issues, because it's much less developed um, at the international level than um, reacting to uh, civil and political rights violations. Mm -hmm. During your presentation you also are responding to the, the transitional justice mechanism are sort of lagging behind or mm -hmm. uh, what is the next step? I mean, I think to some extent we've started it, but I think we need to, m we need to develop it further and in my view that is really to think about Given that transitional justice is context specific, if the context requires that we look at issues outside of uh, the civil and political rights violations, be it, be it corruption like in, in Tunisia, be it uh, economic crimes like in Liberia, whatever it might be, then we really need to think about, first of all, how can we use the existing transitional justice mechanisms everybody is familiar with to deal with these issues and to, to the extent that we can't, uh, what kind of um, alternatives are there? So this is why, for example, I said when, when I talked about the justice side that I think that civil justice is something we should look at more closely because it might be that certain violations and violations by certain actors can be dealt with, with better in the just, on the justice side when thinking more about civil justice rather than focusing exclusively on criminal justice. Justice. So I think issues like that, but there is, yeah, but also, I mean, it, the work has started. We now have uh, people and uh, looking at, and even the UN has uh, brought out the special issue on economic, social, and cultural rights and transitional justice. So there is quite a bit of thinking going on. But I think we are still, well, we, we are still, first of all, not very far, far um, advanced with how to use these uh, mechanisms for these uh, problems. But also we of course still have the debate, should transitional justice even, and we haven't really mentioned that today in the discussion so much, but at, we still have the debate, should it even do that? Because of course many people say it's already so overburdened mm. uh, that it's, uh, by doing that we just raise, uh, we inflate expectations and, um, and we will not do anything properly and uh, we should maybe leave that for a later stage once a transition has actually happened. So there is a lot of debate going on about that and I would think sometimes that might be right and sometimes it might be that you really need to, in order to actually make the transition uh, happen and to, to, to achieve a transition that is meaningful for the victims, you might really have to address these issues, not always, but sometimes. So And, and for those situations we really need to develop the tools further. Mm. 
just finishing off, you, you, you started your presentation by, by sort of defining or trying to define what transition is. <laughs> and, and looking mm. at the state of the world today, 2016, <laughs> it seems like n is it in, it's in either constant c uh, transition or never in transition. Mm. W w w what, mm. what can we make out of, the, out of the situation we're in? Well, I mean, I think... Uh, I, I think globally speaking you're right but then of course transitional justice doesn't have that um, that ambition so it really looks at very uh, ver very specific situations and there I think you can still you can you can still use transition uh, as a meaningful concept because I mean for example m maybe it's not a good example but I was just thinking about Syria because it was mentioned if ever uh, Syria uh, moves to a mob to, to a situation of peace then that would be a, a very very clear transition for example or Colombia if they really achieve their peace I mean if they after 50 years if they can put an end to their conflict then whatever happens around it in the whole world uh, then they have a meaningful transition I think so I think in that sense it still makes sense to think about it.